In this session, we'll study about mitochondria. We'll try to understand the distribution of mitochondria, what type of cells have them. We'll try to understand the location of mitochondria inside the cells. We'll also try to understand the structure and the function of this organelle called mitochondria. And the mitochondria is also known as the powerhouse of the cell for a very good reason that mitochondria produces all the energy required by the cell. Now why does the cell need energy? To reproduce, to grow, to obtain nutrition, and to perform various other tasks, for example repair, etc, etc. So all the energy that a cell needs is provided by the mitochondria. Now what type of cells have mitochondria? All eukaryotic cells have mitochondria in them whereas prokaryotes do not have mitochondria. Now I want to recall the uh, difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes once again. Now eukaryotes are all those cells that have cells that have a nucleus and other organelles such as the endoplasmic reticulum such as the Golgi body uh, such as uh, uh, you got the vacuoles you got the chloroplasts and mitochondria itself so all eukaryotes have or possess mitochondria whether they are animal cells plant cells fungal cells or protozoans but prokaryotes do not have mitochondria and the only prokaryotes known to us are bacteria so bacteria do not have a mitochondria. Now let us talk about the location of the mitochondria inside the cell. Now the mitochondria are found in the cytoplasm and they are usually found freely floating in the cytoplasm. They are found in the cytoplasm. And what about the number of these mitochondria in a cell? Now a cell can have a few mitochondria, two to three mitochondria up to hundreds and thousands of mitochondria per cell. Now what decides how many mitochondria a cell will have? Well it is decided by the energy demands of a cell. If a cell has very high energy requirement it will have more mitochondria. If a cell has lesser, uh, uh, lesser demand of energy it will have lesser number of mitochondria. Now taking an example, in this figure, this figure here, this one here, you see these are all muscle cells, these long cells are muscle cells and this blue structure in the center is the nucleus. Now in this micrograph, which is basically an image under a microscope, so this is a photograph of the cells as we see under a microscope. So in this particular micrograph, we cannot see the mitochondria even if we kind of like uh, zoom in we won't be able to see them but uh, you see that these cells have a very high energy requirement why because they uh, contract and they expand they have to move the body a lot all the times you are moving around your muscles are in action so they require a lot of energy and that's why these cells called the muscle cells have a very high number of mitochondria like 100 to 1000 mitochondria per cell on the other hand these cells here are called the epithelial cells let me write them down for you these are the epithelial cells and these cells they make the outer covering of our organs or of our body for example our skin is made up of epithelial cells if you feel your the surface of your tongue is made up of epithelial cells your cheek on the inside is made up of epithelial cells so epithelial cells do not require a lot of energy compared to the muscle cells and that's why epithelial cells have fewer number of mitochondria in them let us move to the next aspect of mitochondria which is the structure and later on we'll come to the function we've dealt with the function but anyways let's go to the structure first now mitochondria is a kidney bean shaped structure it appears like a kidney bean and it has an outer membrane you can see the outer membrane which is continuous without any folds and the inner membrane which is highly folded so you see the inner membrane is very very much folded and because of these folds the inner membrane is much longer is much longer than the outer membrane 
and there is a reason for this the chemical reactions that produce energy take place in the inner membrane well, let me just also draw an arrow the inner membrane is much longer compared to the outer membrane now the inner membrane is long so that it can provide surface for more number of reactions that produce energy the longer the membrane the more uh, the number of chemical reactions that produce energy can be performed so the reason for inner membrane to be folded is to produce large amounts of energy when needed now let us look at the other structures that are present inside the mitochondria now on the inner space of the inner membrane the space inside the inner membrane is filled with a fluid and that fluid is called the matrix that liquid part is called the matrix and what is the matrix made up of it is made up of water it has got variety of uh, nutrients in it it has got variety of other molecules in it along with those molecules inside the matrix we have dna molecules i hope you remember what dna is dna stands for deoxy ribo nucleic acid this is the meaning of dna and where is we have start, we have already started where dna is found dna is found in the nucleus and the function of the nucleus is to control all the activities of the cell which means that dna controls all the activities of the cell but if the cell let us say this is the cell it has its own nucleus the nucleus has its own dna if the cell has its own dna why mitochondria have their own dna also why do they need dna we'll talk about this in just a moment but first of all let us look at one more interesting structure that is present inside the mitochondria also inside the mitochondria are these green marble like structures in the image that you see which are known as ribosomes now i hope you remember what is the function of ribosomes ribosomes were found on the rough endoplasmic reticulum and their function is to make proteins now if the cell let's come back to the cell if the cell has its own nucleus this is this is the nucleus and inside the nucleus we got the dna and if the cell also has its own endoplasmic reticulum which have ribosomes on it why does the mitochondria so this is the mitochondria why does the mitochondria has its own dna and has its own ribosomes why the answer for this is that it is now believed that mitochondria was not a part of the eukaryotic cells uh, from the beginning rather mitochondria was a free living organism it was kind of a bacteria kind of a free living unicellular organism and sometimes millions of years ago this particular cell came inside the eukaryotic cells and became a part of it and so it has its own dna and it has its own ribosomes even today and for this reason mitochondria is also known as an endosymbiont now don't be bothered by this term you don't have to remember it this year so we'll talk about what endosymbionts are when you are in your higher classes anyways so coming back to mitochondria and its dna and the ribosome now because the mitochondria has its own dna it can control its own activities it does not completely depend on the cell to give it the various directions and orders it can work greatly independently it can work independently of the cell also and so if you if it wants to divide it can divide it can perform variety of other functions for its own self and also the mitochondria can make proteins for its own self it is not completely dependent on the cell for supply of proteins so if the mitochondria needs some proteins it can make proteins for its own self and that's why it is greatly independent 
now this was all about the structure of the mitochondria so we have done the outer membrane the structure of the inner, inner membrane why is the inner membrane folded we have done that uh, we have also studied what is inside the inner membrane the matrix what is inside the matrix the ribosome dna water molecules etc etc so we've done all of this also one more important aspect that you should know is that these folds of the inner membrane are called cristae they are called cristae so this is all you need to know about the structure of the uh, mitochondria now we will come to the function of the mitochondria in a little greater details now mitochondria is the place where respiration takes place now what is respiration so here is respiration what is respiration respiration is a biochemical process biochemical process which means it's a chemical process that takes place in living organisms bio is life so chemical reactions that take place in living organisms are called biochemical reactions so respiration is a biochemical reaction now what is the role of respiration now you people must have everybody seen a car or everybody seen a television set and all of these different devices or machines that we have they require energy to work so what is the function of the car the function of the car is to move is to allow us to move from one place to another but how is motion produced inside a car the car requires energy where is this energy coming from this energy is coming from fuel what is the fuel in the car it's petrol or diesel now how is this fuel basically used to produce energy the fuel is burnt so the fuel undergoes combustion combustion is nothing but burning but what is required for combustion you require fuel we also require a gas called oxygen and when fuel is combined with oxygen and a little heat is provided the petrol starts to burn and when it burns inside the engine there's a structure called the piston which is moved forth and backwards and this rotator this revolves the this uh, uh, brings motion in the tires and that's where the car moves so what have we learned from this example is in order to perform work we require a fuel the fuel must be broken when the fuel is broken we uh, energy is released and this energy is used to produce motion right likewise in the living organisms certainly we require a certain fuel we also require fuel and the fuel in living organisms uh, is mostly some kind of a carbohydrate this is the first choice in living organisms as a source of fuel in the absence of carbohydrates living organisms can also use fats and if there is no carbohydrate or fat in the worst case uh, living organisms can also make use of proteins but the most common uh, substance that we use as a fuel are carbohydrates and among hundreds and thousands of carbohydrates this the most common carbohydrate that is used by most of the living organisms is known as glucose and the chemical formula of glucose is C6H12O6 it means glucose this means that glucose is made up of six atoms of carbon 12 atoms of hydrogen and six atoms of oxygen so in this process called respiration or more, more precisely cellular respiration a molecule of glucose in the presence of six molecules of oxygen you don't have to remember six molecules but remember in the presence of oxygen and special proteins which we call as enzymes and where are these enzymes present they're present here you see these black dots in the inner membrane these are the enzymes and this reaction cellular respiration is taking place here in the inner membrane right so what is happening there glucose molecule in the presence of oxygen and in the presence of special proteins which we call as enzymes this glucose is broken down and what is released carbon dioxide gas we also get water molecules 
and we get a lot of energy and this energy is stored in a molecule called ATP this energy is also stored it is not used directly it is stored in the molecule called ATP ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate now the energy released by the process of cellular respiration is stored in the ATP molecules and where are the ATP molecules stored the ATP molecules are present inside the matrix and whenever these ATP molecules are required by some other part of the cell for example here we got the nucleus and we got a couple of these mitochondria and let us say we have got this is the Golgi body let us assume that these are the Golgi body now let us say the Golgi body needs some energy so what will happen these mitochondria will then supply ATP molecules to the Golgi body to perform work. I hope this is the process, the structure, the function and uh, uh, various other aspects of mitochondria that we have dealt today are amply clear to you. Thank you.